It is Final Fantasy Reconstructed. We are back after defeating the Earth Cave. This is a beta build of the completed ROM hack here. And the great thinkers say, and uh, the author of this hack has quoted it, and I think it's very apt in terms of ROM hacking, the great works of art are never completed, only abandoned. And as someone who does some uh, creative work myself, I definitely understand. Uh, you just keep tweaking it and keep tweaking it, and then finally you have to say, all right, this one is finished, and we need to move on to the next thing. But a lot of ROM hackers, uh, like many great artists, have a hard time letting their work go. So. We will see how many improvements and little tweaks that are made to this one as the years go on. So this is not going to be the uh, final version, and even as this series of Let's Plays is being released, uh, I have seen a number of updates from the author of this, of this hack, based on feedback from a variety of players, and just uh, their own preferences. Anyway, we are on to Crescent Lake here after defeating the Earth Cave and lighting up our first orb. Uh, it's the Circle of Sages back here, at least in the vanilla version. Uh, they will talk to you if you visit them before you go to the Earth Cave, because you certainly can. And if you want to come over here and upgrade your equipment before the Earth Cave, you certainly can if you've got the cash for it, because here's where you can uh, buy all the silver stuff. Um, except for the oddly placed silver sword that they stuck over in Elfland, I think, just to put something really expensive. And they just feel like the Elfland shopkeeper would say, boy, this is really expensive. But here the silver sword shows up for us in this version for the first time. In, uh, in various uh, re-releases and, and patches of this game, the silver sword has been moved either to Melmond or to here. It doesn't really matter because you can access both Melmond and Crescent Lake uh, as soon as you open up Narek's canal. So it doesn't really matter which one they go to, although you're supposed to visit Melmon first. So I'm just checking out the stats of the Silver Sword. Definitely better for now than what we have. And I'm checking the stats of the Silver Hammer. And it's actually not quite as good as that Cleric Hammer that we picked up, so that's an interesting, interesting weapon. I'm very fortunate to have picked that up has harm one on use and is uh, better than the silver hammer for damage and I got it way back in the marsh cave and here I'm just uh, confirming the spell the spell learning ability so the class changed wizards can learn spells that the mage characters can't even if they have charges at that level and one of those is exit the other one is an another one of them is warp which I tried to learn last time at Nullman. So yes, my white mage cannot yet learn exit. Uh, we hear mention of the Circle of Sages, even in the vanilla version, uh, the Circle of Sages I think is mentioned. And I missed, I missed, remembered which one gives you the canoe. I knew it was one of these guys over here. Now the Fire Fiend wakes with this canoe, get to the Guru Volcano. This is Lucan, who's kind of the main sage, and you hear his name mentioned. One of the few named characters in this game. There are not very many named characters. Um, we're just checking out the text of the sages. You can read that if you care to. Uh, a lot. It seems like this is um, touched up very little from the vanilla version. Maybe, maybe possibly uh, clarified on the translation. Although that one, the fire fiend will burn everything up. I think that's word for word. Uh, so that guy, as you reveal lights, or uh, as you restore lights to more crystals, come talk to us. Yeah, so the sages have some dialogue that's prompted by the number of crystals you have lit. Um, so the the one that gives you the canoe looks to see if the earth crystal is lit when you talk to him. And if so, he gives you the canoe. If you come talk to him before, he has some different text and does not give you the canoe. You saw the canoe has a, uh, a new sprite, a little um, a little more detailed sprite. Um, I'm guessing that came from a later NES Final Fantasy release, although I don't have quite the knowledge on that. I'm sure someone will correct me on that. And here I'm just testing the ability of the the ship to dock at a river when you have the canoe. And sure enough, you can do that. So that becomes uh, critical for what we're doing next. And it's, it's a bit of a... It's arguably a sequence break to go pick up the rat's tail and the treasures in the Castle of Ordeals and as part of the what 
some players call the mid-game Troika, the Ice Cave, the Volcano, and the Castle of Ordeal. They are the three new dungeons or new areas that you can go to once you get uh, once you get the canoe. So the game wants you to, and the uh, the old strategy guide in the manual wants you to go to the volcano right now. It's the closest one. It connects to Crescent Lake. It connects to that uh, that river system in Crescent Lake. You're supposed to go to the volcano, beat the fire fiend, then go to the ice cave, and uh, beat the eye, pick up the floater, then get the airship, and then you can go all around the world, do whatever you want, do ordeals at your leisure, because um, ordeals, of course, and class changing is uh, totally optional. You do not have to do it at all. It's one of the very few side quests in this game. <laughs> the only the only other one that you could possibly count as a side quest might be the adamant, uh, bringing the adamant back to the dwarf cave to have him make the Excalibur for you. And I'm still not sure if you can count that as a side quest. Now here is, there's a river system connecting um, the, the sea to the land here. And the Castle of Ordeals, you see we have a different sprite for the castle. This is where we start to have a little bit tougher enemy sets on the world map in this northern continent. And this is what the Peninsula of Power... Well, the, this particular set is not what's on the Peninsula of Power. So this is interesting here because the Castle of Ordeal looks like can only be reached by ship in this one. I, I need to... need to glance back at my vanilla map to see if, uh... If that's also the case in vanilla, or if it's easier to land the airship near your castle of ordeals. Here is the odd check of the crown. You have to have the crown way back from the marsh cave, which is an, an odd check um, for the castle of ordeals. Here we have totally reworked dungeon floors and choices of doors. Oh, and here's a sprite initiated encounter with it's just a green giant. So I'll have to check the, the vanilla map again, because off the top of my head I can't remember, although it's been a long time since I have tried to take the airship to the Castle of Ordeals, but I think you can land the airship nearby. Um, but it looks like on this world map uh, you must bring the ship down. Maybe that's a reference to the fact that we can do a semi-sequence break and do it early. I'm not sure. That's just a wild speculation on my part. So this is a similar kind of random battle that you would get in the Castle of Ordeals in the vanilla version. I'm not 100% sure if this is actually a uh, battle formation, like a numbered, uh, bona fide battle formation from vanilla, but, but these kinds of enemies, the Zombles and Trolls, possibly in combination, are ones that you would see in the Castle of Ordeals. And these are the battles you want in the Castle of Ordeals, because these guys don't have the instant death stuff that uh, some other Ordeals battles have between the, uh, the Sorcerers and the Medusa enemies. I'm never sure if it should be Medusa's or Medusae, spelled with A-E at the end because it's Greek. I don't know. It doesn't matter. So these ones I, I will fight. Um, and we have more characters here. <laughs> and I'm healing up after that, that random battle. So, but the Castle Ordeals in the Nilla version is also a maze with uh, choices of warp tiles. So once you enter, you're kind of stuck. You can't really get out very easily. Uh, you might not be able to get out. I don't think you can get out at all, except dying. Um, and you warp in... Uh, the, what they built the warp tiles out of is the um, the pillar uh, sprites. So the, the pillar background tiles. So castle pillars. And you have... They, they warp you around between the floors. And it's a little bit more clear in that one that you're being warped around generally on your same floor. So you go up go up some steps. That was a death knight there, and he knocked uh, knocked out poor Gran with the kill spell. So you but it's it's clear in the vanilla version from a visual storytelling standpoint that you're warping around your floor so you can find the steps. This one, um, we are going into doors that look like they might have steps on them. Now, I'm guessing from a technical standpoint, I'm guessing this 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 castle probably still has the same number of floors as the original Castle of Ordeals. Um, so we might just be cleverly warping around floors um, 
with the illusion that we are going up and down floors. Now here, that's a total wild conjecture on my part, without looking at the change log or anything. That's just a total guess. Someone may confirm or deny that. Uh, and please do confirm or deny that in the comments below. And hey, give me those thumbs up or thumbs down if you do like or don't like the videos. I would greatly appreciate that. Here's a reference to, uh, another reference to FF4. We have the Guardian enemies uh, that show up with the, the big Guardian robot. The Guardian sentry combo. And they've got some very high physical uh, defense, as you would imagine these, these robots would. So it's really just the crits that are going to get through to them. And I'm trying to save my spell charges because this is the first time I've set foot here in the Castle of Ordeals, and I'm not quite sure what to expect. So two hits for 50, two hits for 42. So if I'm, I'm whiffing on a few of those hits and I need to get some crits, there's a crit. So that's a way to, uh, to get over damage caps. And there's the Zeus Gauntlet, which is one of the coveted treasures in the Castle of Ordeals in the vanilla version. The Zeus Gauntlet um, will now finally make my uh, my mage characters legitimate uh, combatants in, in all of our fights, because I now have free access to all targeting Bolt 2 damage. I can use it over and over and over again, every single round of every single battle, and you will see one of one or the other of my mages use that pretty much every round of every battle for the rest of the game. So the um, here we, we notice the the sound effect of going over the damage tiles uh, has knocked out our music, and then you can restore it by going into your menu. So I'm I'm just kind of examining the floor. I didn't see any more treasure chests, but there's a couple more doors. So just like the ordeals uh, before, I've got several choices of which uh, door or which warp tile to choose. So here I'm back on the floor with the Death Knight. And then here I'm actually going backwards. So I'm that's back in the entrance hallway. So I'm stumbling around a little bit so I know I can go over to the left, coming in, come up through the through the floor with the uh, the sprite initiated encounter. So I know my way around the first couple of rooms, and that's how you're supposed to do the Castle of Ordeals in the NES version. You're supposed to just pound your head up against it a few times until you know the route, and then uh, go through and hope you get a clean run without a lot of uh, un unlucky battles. Because you can get into a sequence where you just you run through it. You just get a few battles. And uh, those few battles are with less threatening enemies. So it's clear in this first room, um, the designer of this made it clear that hey, there's only one way forward. So from a, again, from kind of a visual storytelling or visual narrative standpoint, we have a very clear message that there's only one way forward. That's, it's not spoken out loud, it's just implied by the layout of the dungeon. Right, so we can make it here, and we're back on this floor. So I've tried that bottom right door, and I know that that just leads me back. And these these are battles that can uh, really crush you in the, in the vanilla version. You get a back attack from the Medusa enemies, and uh, they can knock out a couple characters or sorcerers before you can even get a turn. So thanks a lot, Medusas. Thanks for nothing. And then I think the Castle of Ordeals has the... Yeah, so we're kind of alternating between the castle music and the dungeon music, which is very cool. So I know that that door takes me bad places. I know the upper left door takes me bad places. Uh, the Horned Devil, I believe, uh, these are the Red Goyle enemies from Vanilla. And... Uh, Seeing that Fire 2 kind of uh, confirms my suspicions that, uh, that those are the red goils. There we go. So there we have another instance of our... of our uh, sound effect knocking out the music. And I'm looking at the red goil stats right now, and it looks like Horned Devil comes from... Um, 
was used in, in a later official translation, which is cool. And they have, yeah, they have a 50% um, chance to use a spell on every turn, and their first spell is, uh, is Fire 2. So those guys can be very dangerous. Now here, we're using a Town Sprite, and all of the... All of the townsfolk have been replaced by monsters. We have dragons. We have the um, the hooded hooded figure. I think we see that that those hooded figures in like the in Final Fantasy IV, like in the Summoner Town. I think. So going into the doors of the shops, uh, I entered a couple of them and I was pushed backwards every time. Now this is a deadly battle. This is a um, game over kind of battle. A back attack from a big group of these Horned Devils who have a 50% chance to cast Fire 2 on their first turn. After that, their spell list, at least in vanilla, this is, remember I'm going by vanilla, it goes Fire 2, Hold, and then Fire, Fire. So their later spells are not so bad, but when they pop out and their first spell is Fire 2, they will, uh, they will just crush you. So there's Hold, so we have a second round Hold. Um, I mean, Hold's not great because it's <laughs> kills our chance to run. Um, but yeah, that back attack is really nothing, and what I'm just doing here is I'm just looking up. Uh, even if I did run from that battle, I would only get a few more steps before I got knocked out. So, we are going to count a death here in uh, four hits, four damage, and defeated. And that can just happen. And if you think that that's a result of this hack, then you've never played the vanilla version of this game. Kind of looks like Bowser's Castle, I think. And you've never played the vanilla version of this game, son or daughter, because this game will do that to you mercilessly. And I went in the wrong door. There we go. Now I know not to talk to any of these sprite sprite encounters. I didn't try the uh, the other two monsters in the room because I just took the hint that uh, I do not belong here. I took their hint. So now I have to grab the Zeus Gauntlet again. Uh, unfortunately, so I have to fight the trap square with the nasty uh, robots. And here I have an extra sentry now. Two guardians and a sentry. And uh, these, these are ones that I it's not clear, at least jumping out at me, uh, what which enemies these may have replaced in the enemy table. Again, that's under the assumption that the hacker of this one was replacing enemies rather than adding enemies in, in the encounter table, which is would be probably the easier track to go. I haven't played around much or at all, I should say, with the Final Fantasy editor at this time, so I'm not sure how it works, but I'm guessing the easiest way to do it is to just take a pre-existing enemy and just manually change its stats, its name, its sprites, its spells, its, uh, its abilities. So these guys hit for a lot of damage, and they can stun you, and they have they have high defense. So look at that. But I have access to the life spell, so losing a character doesn't mean that this run is over. And that's just why you have the white mage around, man. It's for that life spell, that exit spell, things that are things that are handy. And I want to see what. Um, what the warp spell, or not warp spell, what the uh, the holy spell looks like at the end, and uh, I want to try the uh, the dispel spell, which is called Expert in the vanilla version. I want to try that again because one of the more fun things in one of my previous videos was um, actually using dispel correctly and uh, and putting all kinds of crazy statuses on end game bosses because you can remove their resistance to things, including fear. So you can knock those enemies out with uh, with fear, make them run away. So we have the uh, the fun with phantom video, where I make the phantom enemy run away, knock it with the spell, and hit with fear. And uh, I actually got silence to land on chaos in a four white mages run using uh, using expert. So you remove the resistance, then you still have to land the spell normally, so it's not an automatic uh, uh, landing of silence. But after a couple of attempts at kind of low odds rather than impossibly low odds, you can hit him with silence, and uh, then he's pretty much toothless the rest of the battle, because he'll waste turns trying to use spells and abilities. He's not smart enough. No enemy in this game is smart enough to uh, skip their spell routine. All right, so here we've made it back to the place where the Horned Devils took us out. And uh, so we're getting, you see we're, we're getting a little farther in each crawl, because we're using fewer steps to 
go through each one. And that's eventually when you get uh, experienced enough with the yeah, trance, the all targeting stun ability. Yikes. When you get good with uh, with Final Fantasy 1, eventually. So this just brought me back a floor. So now I know don't go that way. And there's only one other way to go on this floor. These are uh, rat enemies that would appear in later games, Rakshasa. Um, and I think Rakshasas um, are cat people in other versions of this. I'm not sure where the mythology of the Rakshasa uh, comes from. It sounds uh, maybe maybe Persian or Middle Eastern uh, of cat people. But um, we have the rat name, but I'm not sure. I don't know enough about the mythology to make a, uh, a statement on it, just pointing out that uh, we have a, a new kind of enemy with a rat-like sprite. So here we have another castle tile. Now one big difference um, in this one is that it's much more clear in this variation when you've taken a wrong uh, warp. Because the, the tile sets change, you know that, oh, I went back to the town and the town is is actually you know a walkable town it looks like Melmond you know it's possibly a reworked Melmond so I know that that's not the way forward I know I've gone back and the castle ordeals everything looks the same and because of the narrow view that you have and uh, yeah I got knocked out by some by some sorcerers there so I know that this one is also not going to be a victory um, because that can also happen. You just get those death touch attacks and down go your characters. So, but because of the narrow field of view, well, we'll try it again. In the NES version, in this Castle Board Deals, when you take a wrong tile warp, it just puts you somewhere else on the floor with more windy hallways and more, uh, more warp pillars. So it's very easy to get disoriented. And I have to fight the Guardian sentries again to get that Zeus Conley, because that is a, that is a non-negotiable in this dungeon. This is a better battle set. But in this in this variation, you when you take a wrong turn, it looks like the the programmer or the author of this hack has you go to go clearly back a tile set, back a floor, where you know, okay, I've been here, I just came through these stairs or just went through this, so I know that's not the way forward, so I can turn around and come back. So uh, the the author of this has made the ordeal castle a little bit more player friendly. And by putting um, this tough battle here, um, they've made the battles a little tougher, um, but not the wandering around. Because the way to beat the Castle of Ordeals when you're low level is just uh, know your way through before you step in there and hope for good battle sets. And then you, you generally have enough to uh, enough firepower to beat the zombie dragon at the end. So you can do uh, either, either one or two zombie dragons as a trap square at the end. But because they're undead, you can hit them with your high-level harm spells, and they have the weakness to fire. So you can uh, generally get the zombie dragons pretty easily. They, they don't have uh, too many big, nasty attacks. Yeah, uh, the zombie dragons... Yeah, they don't have any skills or magic in the, in the vanilla version, the zombie Ds. They have the status attack Paralyze. Um, but, uh, yeah, they have the weakness to fire, so they just do physical attacks. They do good damage, obviously. Um, 56 base attacks, so 56 to 112, um, with, uh, with just one hit, so. They're doable, and they give, they give out really good golden experience. So, here just hoping for good run luck. Here's the town set again. And I know I need to go down and left, so you get a little bit smarter with every crawl of this dungeon. Here's those wizards again, so we have to hope we can get away. And here's that castle floor again. Alright, so I know there's chests on the left. And it's a ruby bracelet, and I think that you get um, that in the vanilla version. You get a better bracelet. And an ice sword. I cannot remember if Ice Sword is one that you can pick up, if there's another Ice Sword in here. I do have an Ice Sword. There we go. But I can't remember. There's there's other Ice Swords you can pick up, I think, in the game. And an Iron Gauntlet. Some cash. 
So Zeus Gauntlet is a big one. The other big treasure in the vanilla version in in this dungeon here, and this is even more important than the Zeus Gauntlet, and that's the Heal Staff. The Heal Staff is absolutely critical. And not knowing what the author of this hack has done, I don't know if the Heal Staff is going to be waiting for me in here, or if I've missed it, possibly, or if it's in another dungeon, or if it's been reworked and it's something else now. I don't know, so... We're just going to keep crawling. Now, the heal staff in the vanilla version uses the odd uh, double chest mechanic that, uh, that some patches have taken out because it seems very weird, but where the same piece of treasure can be picked up in one of two different chests in the same dungeon, and once you pick it, pick it out of one of them, the other one becomes empty. Um, it's very weird how that works, but you can get the heal staff on one floor or on the next floor above it. So, and, and the trapped battle in front of them is there's two different trapped battles. So I'm there. I'm just rearranging the Zeus gauntlet so it's near the top of the menu, so I don't have to uh, to navigate it in the use item uh, menu. All right. So there's a couple chests, and there's a throne up there. So I'm guessing there's the heal staff. That one should play. Bum ba da 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 da. -da. In my opinion, that one should play that because awesome. And there's the rat tail, so there actually isn't a trapped battle for the rat tail, but let's see if there's a trapped battle going up to the throne, which likely, it, at least in the vanilla version, the throne is your warp out. That's how you get out of this. Now, and I'm, I'm wondering if they didn't allow... It, ooh, it stinks! Throw it over! Yep. So I think they, they that text is very similar. So it's possible that they left... Um, they made it so that only the wizards could equip the warp ability to keep you from coming into this dungeon and getting out uh, before you can get it. Although, there is a, not like the boss battle of the, of the zombie dragon or two is anything, uh, anything crazy. Now here I'm, I'm prepping up for what could possibly be a trapped square directly in front of that throne. And sure enough, here is a battle. Uh, likely this was a trap square, although I can't uh, can't confirm that. Which one of these two may have been a trap square? Although I think getting a battle two steps in a row is uh, is not normally possible unless one of them is a trap square. But I think all of the step counts are even. I could be wrong on that. That's uh, just going by my memory. But gold golem's gone, <laughs> and because I am presuming that I'm near the end, I'm going to go ahead and just use my uh, invis two charge to increase my evasion. In case the Mithril Golem has uh, one of those many hits for lots and lots of damage kinds of things, as the Golems tend to do. Although some of the Golems uh, in the vanilla version have annoying spells where they, they can kind of boost their own evasion and slow you and do a lot of ugly things. So that wasn't too bad. And they had even started the ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, as I went into the, um, into the throne. So just as in the vanilla version, there's a slight sound uh, sound hiccup there. So that's not that's not something that's just in this patch. That happens in the vanilla version. So there's a cast of ordeals. We came out with the Zeus Gauntlet, the Heel Staff, and the Rat Tail. We will be using two of those three when we go on into the volcano and the ice cave in the next couple of videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for hitting that thumbs up button or thumbs down button if you like or don't like this video and leave me a comment, leave me your thoughts. I'd love to hear from you and we will see you next time.